Today on the Bearded Coffee Blogger, we talk making coffee at home with just a regular old drip brewer. Don't miss it. What's up internet? This has been the Bearded Coffee Blogger and I'm today with you and we're talking about making drip coffee at home. And hopefully if you make coffee with just kind of a regular old coffee maker at home, we're going to help improve your game a little bit. So we're going to talk about that today. And basically the thing that you need to know is this can get as complicated or, or as simple as you want it to be. Uh, but there's a lot of little pieces of equipment or details that you can kind of add to your routine that are going to make your coffee taste just that much better. And so I want to talk through each of those uh, briefly and then we're going to brew some coffee. But um, there are basically six things that you need to make great coffee. You need a, a good coffee maker. You need a good burr grinder. You need a scale and I'm big on the scale. Uh, I think this piece of equipment can change your coffee a lot because it'll just add consistency. You need to start buying whole bean coffee and the fresher the coffee it is and, and I would say if you're especially if you're in a bigger city or a city with a coffee shop buy from them if you like what they serve uh, so good whole bean coffee number four water man water and the right water is really important we'll talk about that and a filter of course so six things so uh, those are the six things that you need to make good brewed coffee at home with just a drip coffee maker and let's be honest if you're making it with a drip coffee maker even if it's a Mr. Coffee you're already ahead of the game compared to the Keurig folks uh, sorry if I'm hating a little bit, but it's true. Hate cured. Um, so let's talk through each of these elements and talk about why we need them and that sort of thing. Um, the first thing you need is a really, well, is you need a drip coffee maker. Now again, if you've got a Mr. Coffee, something like that, awesome. But if you're looking to buy one, uh, buy a new machine, there's a couple that I really recommend. One would be one like this, this is a Technivorm Mocha Master. Uh, my wife bought me this several years ago. It's an absolutely great coffee maker because it brews at the proper brewing temperature, which really matters. So it, it consistently throughout the whole batch brews at 195 to 205 degrees. And it also brews relatively quickly. Some coffee makers brew too slow. This will brew a whole pot of coffee in about four to six minutes. And so that's great. Um, a, a cheaper option, this one looks really awesome, and when I bought it, it was kind of the only option that was out there. But now there's a company called, um, uh, oh man, I'm forgetting. There's a company called Bonavita, and they make a, another great coffee maker. It retails for 100 to 150, depending on the, the one you get. Uh, this is about double that. And so the Bonavita brews absolutely great coffee. Um, to me, it, this looks cooler, but this is double the price. And so functionally, they're about the same, and most folks just go with the Bonavita. So I would, getting a good coffee maker that can brew at the proper temperature, game changer. But again, if you're not ready to make that plunge, maybe you might be wanting to upgrade in one of these other areas, and that'd be great too. So a uh, good coffee maker, step number one. Uh, step number two, or, or item number two, and a lot of people say this is the biggest single way that you can improve all types of coffee, whether you're making it with this or pour over or anything else at home, is to get a grinder. Coffee will lose a lot of freshness, uh, you know, within 20, 30 minutes after it's ground, and you'll really begin to, to not be able to taste all the awesome stuff, natural flavors, the terroir that's in the coffee, if it's been ground for a long time. So buying a grinder and grinding just as much coffee as you're about to use right before you brew will make a huge difference in how good your coffee tastes at the house. And so, uh, you know, I used to be an advocate of like even a blade grinder is, is better than no grinding, but that's debatable now because when a blade grinder grinds it up, you know, some of it's chunky and bigger chunks, some of it's really fine. And the more inconsistent your grind is, actually the worse your coffee is going to taste. So Rather than buy a blade grinder, what I'm going to recommend is that you buy a burr grinder. And there are lots of really good burr grinders, and they can get extravagantly expensive, uh, but there's some pretty good entry-level ones too. This is a Barazza, and basically anything Barazza makes is great, so I highly recommend them. They have one that's a step down from this one called the Encore that retails for about $100. 
My brother, Andy, also has a Bodum Bistro, I think is what it is, that I think is about $70, and it's a great entry-level bird grinder. Uh, so those are two options you have with that, but a bird grinder, you know, it's gonna take two burrs, and they're set at a consistent distance from each other, and it mashes the coffee through there, and when it does that, it produces a consistent particle size, and the more consistent the particle size of your grinds are, the better your coffee is going to extract evenly and, and taste great is bottom line. So burr grinder, really important. Uh, thirdly, and like I said, I'm big on this one, it's getting a digital scale. If you will, you can go to Target and get one or Amazon. This is a Jennings CJ4000. It's a great digital scale. The reason you want a scale is that if you can weigh out the weight of your water and the weight of your beans every single time and dial in that recipe, then you know your coffee is going to be pretty much exactly the same every time. It's going to taste great every time because it's much more accurate than a scoop or just using the lines on the coffee maker. Uh, so today when we brew, we're actually going to use, and we'll go ahead and start doing it, we're actually going to use for this one, this, um, you know, this coffee maker can take uh, a liter and one, one and a fourth liters of water, which is 1,250 grams. And I like to use, I mention this a lot, but I like to use typically a 16, you know, 16 to one ratio, you know, 16 being the water, one being the coffee when I brew. But actually for this machine, I, I use closer to 17 to one or even a little bit over that. So for any sort of pour over, I would recommend you do 16 to one, unless you find that you prefer it even a little bit the ratio a little bit greater, but Intelligentsia says 16 to one. They're usually my go by, you know, that they're where I start. They, they are, their standards are where I usually start. Um, but this one, I just know over the years from having used it, that I really like a 17 to one. So I'm actually using, or, or close to that. I'm, so I'm using 70 grams of coffee for 1250 grams of water. And I've pre-weighed that out. So I made a mistake in a previous filming of this video, not having this set to the right grind setting. You want to, when you're making drip coffee, you want to have kind of a coarser sea salt uh, is kind of usually the grind consistency that you're going for. I, what I would say is if you're really, if you have a burr grinder, but you're like, man, I don't ever know if I'm grinding on the right setting. What I would do, because all, all burr grinders are different. So it's not like a 28, which is what I'm using on here is the same as a 28 on a different burr grinder. So what I would do if you're really like, man, I'm trying to figure this out and, and dial this in is I would go to your local coffee shop and get them to grind up just a little bit of coffee for you on their drip brew setting and then take it home and you can actually dump it out on like a, like a white paper plate and you can dial in your grind setting so you can go, oh man, mine's finer, take it a little coarser or man, mine's too coarse compared to theirs, take it a little finer and that will help you actually dial in um, the consistency that you need. I'm gonna go ahead and grind this real quick. All right, so we got that ground and you go ahead and take it out. And I usually kinda bang that around, make sure I got it all. Lots of people are big on pre-wetting your filter. And I usually do with pour over, usually with a drip brew like this, I don't worry about it. The reason people pre-wet their filter is to get rid of any sort of papery taste that might be in your paper filter. Uh, we're not going to worry about it with this time, but if you want to, if you want to be super technical, lots of people like to do that, uh, pre-wet your filter. And then, like I said, you add, in my case, we're doing 70 grams of coffee with 1250 uh, grams of water, which takes it out to a little bit over 17 to one, which I know works really well for this coffee maker, which takes it right up to that 10. All right. And then we're gonna go ahead and start. Another cool thing that you can do just with this coffee maker, I don't know if any other ones do it. Go ahead. Man, there's grinds everywhere. Is on this one is this actually has this thing where you can close or open the reservoir. And so some people, and I'll do this sometimes, will right as this begins to brew, I'll leave it closed, take the top off, and I'll let it the coffee just bloom just a tad at the beginning, the way I would with a pour over, and then I'll open it up. I might even stir the grounds around to make sure everything's 
equally kind of wet. So I'll go ahead and grab my, my cool spoon to do that. Again, this is not necessarily necessary, but it may help your, your grounds to extract a little bit even more evenly uh, by stirring this up and just trying to make sure everything is equally wet. That's kind of the, the deal with brewing coffee really well is the more consistently all of your grounds are the same size and are equally wet and can equally extract flavor, the same flavor, the better your coffee is going to be, the more even it's going to taste and, and the more you're really going to enjoy that cup. That's why you can spend an absurd amount of money on, um, on really expensive grinders because, you know, the truth is uh, the $3,000 grinder, you know, really, really, really crazily keeps all that, all those grounds consistently the same size. Um, but you know, hardly any of us, unless we're running a coffee shop or in that sort of vein. So um, another thing I want to mention, I just threw around that word bloom as if everybody knew what I was talking about. But coffee, when you first start brewing, if it's fresh, uh, especially, is going to let off carbon dioxide uh, from the grounds. And so they're going to be, be releasing the carbon dioxide is. And um, if you will let some of that gas escape right at the beginning, uh, so some people will pour just a little bit of water at the beginning and kind of let that gas get out, then that's going to improve the taste of your coffee as well. And then you do, if you're doing a pour over, then you do the rest of your pour. In this case, we just closed the reservoir and did that a little bit. Again, that's kind of optional, not absolutely necessary. You may not have a machine that allows you to do that, but it's something I kind of do sometimes with this. Um, so we're going we're gonna to let this brew and I'm going to talk about water because that's really the one thing I didn't talk about yet. Like I said, um, you know, the fresher your beans are and grinding right before you brew, that's gonna make a huge difference. That may be a step up for a lot of you. But another thing that can get in the way of having, making great coffee is not having great water. Uh, now it just makes sense. Coffee is literally just grounds and water. That's what goes into it. And so if your water tastes funky or has some chlorine in it or isn't the freshest, then your coffee's maybe gonna have a little bit of chlorine taste or some funkiness and not taste the best. And so you can go way down the rabbit hole of geekiness on this, but uh, what, what coffee professionals have figured out is you don't want water with nothing in it, like distilled water, you don't wanna use that, or reverse osmosis water, you don't wanna use that. You actually want some trace minerality in your water because the flavor molecules in the coffee and those minerals that are present in the water will actually bind together and bring out more flavor and the coffee will taste better. If you have pure distilled water or reverse osmosis water, your coffee will probably taste a little bit flat. And so coffee shops will go to great lengths to remove everything and then put back in minerals through filter systems. Uh, you're probably not in that, in that vein. And so what I recommend is if you have a good refrigerator, like we have a relatively new refrigerator and it has a built-in water filter, then I'll just use the water filter on that and makes great tasting coffee. If you're not in that vein or boat, you can buy one of those like Brita filter pitchers. They can go in your fridge and you can filter that way. That'll make a difference. Or you could just buy gallon jugs of spring water. So don't get the distilled water, but get the gallon jugs of spring water. And that's going to make a huge difference in how your coffee tastes. So just to reiterate everything that we've said, a good coffee maker that brews at the right time, four to six minutes for a, really six for a full pot, um, super important and brews at the right temperature. Uh, using a burr grinder that produces consistent grind size, super important, will make a big difference to your coffee. Using a digital scale and weighing both your water, which I'd pre-weighed, and your coffee and using a consistent recipe will make a huge difference to how good your coffee tastes. Uh, using fresh whole bean coffee from a local shop is what I recommend. It's gonna make a huge difference on your, in your coffee. And then fifthly, using good filtered um, water or good spring water that's really clean with no, no off taste, no, no chlorine taste or too much other stuff in there is gonna make your coffee taste better. And then with filter, I really am a big fan of using paper filters rather than like a gold filter or a silver filter. 
Um, that's a preference thing totally, uh, but I, using a paper filter is going to um, not put any sediment in the coffee and it's also going to produce a cleaner cup. And so at the end of the day, your coffee, you'll probably taste a little bit more of the individuality in your coffee and the different flavors that are in there if you use a paper filter. Um, but some people really like that sediment. They like the heavy body. Uh, they like that more oils get let through with a gold or a silver cone filter. So you may prefer that, but, uh, but I would say go, go paper filter. And then with your recipe, with your coffee recipe as this is finishing up, you know, like I said, with a drip coffee maker, I would start with a 17 to one ratio. But you may find, at, you know, after you brew a pot or two that way, that you're like, ooh, I would like it. It seems a little weak to me. So you may want to, you may want to step down to something like a 16 to one. So it's a little bit more coffee per ounce of water. Or you may say, man, that's a tad strong for me. So if 17 to one is your baseline for drip coffee, you may want to edge towards 18 to one or 17 and a half to one. But you can basically adjust to your taste. Um, and that's really six things, but there's six elements, um, but that's really the way to make great uh, drip coffee at home. I'm gonna let the few last drips go through here and I'm gonna grab a cup. That's all my coffee gear. People say it's ridiculous, um, unless they're kind of obsessive like I am. Um, so that has stopped. And then uh, another important thing, after you brew your coffee, it's really not good to leave it on the burner. Take it off the burner uh, so that, it, you know, if you leave brewed coffee on a burner for even a few minutes, it can start to produce an off taste. Coffee, naturally, the, the taste evolves and changes as it cools, and that's kind of a fun thing to pay attention to anyway. Um, so I take it off the burner. If it's staying hot for a long time is really important, uh, both this company and Bonavita make a version of a coffee maker that doesn't have a glass craft that has a double walled stainless steel craft and I would say get one of those um, so that it will keep the coffee warm but will not um, will not burn it uh, on a burner but yeah you do those six things and let's go ahead and taste this mm. man when you're tasting coffee always smell it and look at it not to be too much like that Bud Light commercial with the mead, but you know what I mean. It's both the, the way it looks and the way it smells and the way it tastes that really produces the full effect. It's great coffee. Uh, man, so this has been Ben, the Bearded Coffee Blogger. This is how I make drip coffee at home. I make it a lot of other ways at home, and we'll do future videos about that. If you're like, man, I can't afford, I, I would love to make, Man, spit just so. Um, if, if if you're at home and you're like, man, I would like to make better coffee at home, but I can't afford to buy a new coffee maker and a grinder and a scale, then just pick one and upgrade a little bit as you go. Is what I would say, and you'll find that with each little update you make, your coffee's just going to get just that much better. And so I would probably start with a, a burr grinder if you don't have one before I'd even upgrade this. I'd probably start with you know going in and buying a good good burr grinder. And then I would actually buy the scale probably second. And then I would go, okay, now I'm gonna upgrade the coffee maker, something like that, you know, or change up your water or whatever. But each one of these elements is gonna help you. So I hope this has been helpful. Really appreciate you guys watching the channel. If you're enjoying this content, smash that like button for me, subscribe to the channel, maybe share this to somebody that you think would enjoy it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.